Good, good, good push. Good push quest. Good push quest. Getting there. Ooh, yeah. Hey guys, Kat here from Sanding Stone Kennels and Quest is in those early stages of labor. Uh, as you saw in the last video, we showed everything you need to do to be prepared for this and that was less than 24 hours ago. So within 24 hours, her temperature has dropped a little bit and you can see she's doing some light panting. She's also been nesting and raking up her bedding. Um, definitely a little more uncomfortable, peeing a lot, needing to use the bathroom because she's feeling all that additional pressure as well as because we see these signs, um, we're not actually going to offer her food, but refusal of food, if you weren't seeing this, um, these signs could indicate also that labor is pretty close. Um, the reason that I do not want to feed her right now is she is very big. Those contractions are gonna get pretty heavy and hard and I don't need her vomiting through those contractions as well. Um, she is going to get an opportunity for small meals later on in this process to keep her energy up. And she does get to eat all of those placentas which are high in nutrition and energy for her to keep her laboring. Um, the other thing is if we would have to go for an emergency C-section, she doesn't need a stomach full of food in that process. So she's in what I consider early stages of labor, the light panting, little uncomfortable, nesting, feeling, feeling pressure, and then the next stages of labor, which is what I would consider active labor, is when contractions are going to start. She's going to have some discharge. She's going to be doing some pushing, um, and she's going to probably tremble and feel pretty uncomfortable. So having my presence there, helping her feel more comfortable because um, our dogs are very much a part of our family and our lives, and they want us there with them. I want to be there with her, help support her and feel comfortable, help with any of those puppies if there's any complications. So I will show you what that process, whelping an entire litter of puppies, looks like in the next video. So follow along and see how Quest does having her litter of puppies. So this light panting and early signs of labor and early labor stages really can take a long time. It just depends on every dog is a little bit different. Some mamas go pretty quick from you starting to see these active labor signs to really pushing and contracting. And some mamas will lightly pant and be uncomfortable all day long. So, or all night long, depending on when your mama decides she's gonna have her puppies. So just be prepared to spend um, as much time as possible with them so that they can feel comfortable to move into that active labor stage. Quest is more in active labor now. You can see her tummy's tensed up. She's doing some pushing, her tail's curled, um, so. We're probably gonna be working on her first puppy here. So we're gonna sit with her through this process. Some mamas labor and push comfortably down like this. Some wanna stand, some wanna sit. Um, it's kind of just what's most comfortable for them. Here we go. Questy Pup's gonna have her babies today. Hopefully we get it done during the day, huh, mama? Yeah, hopefully we get it done during the day, mama. Quest is moved into the active labor stage. You can see her pushing, her tail's curling, she's contracting. Puppy's working on moving into the birth canal. This process can take a little while depending on each mama, where the puppy's at, how big the puppy is. So we just stay here and help encourage her to keep pushing when she needs to. Some mamas like to labor, like I said, laying down. Some want to be standing up. Some like to be sitting. And it could vary depending on each puppy. So we're going to see how this goes with this first puppy. You can already see it kind of moving into the birth canal. There was a little bit of discharge. Quote unquote, water broke on this first puppy. Mamas like to lick. Sometimes when they're really big, it's hard for them to be able to get back there and lick. Now she wants to move around a little bit, um, trying to get into a more comfortable position where she can reach. There we go, gloves in place. 
just in time for it to get messy, huh, Questy Pup? You can see some trembling happening. Um, definitely uncomfortable standing up, more pushing. You can see that trembling in her legs. Good job, Quest. So there was more of a broke water, um, a lot of fluid just discharged. There we go. Oh, let me get over here for a puppy coming. A lot more fluid. Good job, puppy. Let's see if we can see what's happening here a little bit without getting in mama's way. Good girl. some of this. Keep my welcome box cleaned up as much as I can. Usually first that, after that first couple puppies, mamas get a little more comfortable. stop moving around the box quite so much, especially because they have some puppies in there with them that they're working on caring for and nursing already. I can always pop my pillow out. Sometimes you sit with mama a really long time and it's nice to have a little comfortable spot for your butt. Right, Quest? Girl. Just trying to help keep that whelping pad under there, absorb as much of that discharge and fluids as we can. Good mama. You can see her, see her tail curling through those pushes and contractions. Good job, good push. Another really good push, good. Just checking, I can't feel the puppy yet in that birth canal. No more licking, yeah, no puppy yet, mama. As puppies come out and labor progresses, it will get easier for her to be able to reach and lick. Yep, yep, yep. Good pushes. Good job, Mama. Good job. Good job. Good job, Mama.
Bob, here comes a puppy. You can see it starting the little puppy sack. Oh, that opening. Yeah. Good job, Mama. Keep pushing. So at this point, I want her to keep pushing and not give up on this contraction so we can finish this little puppy out. You can feel a little puppy foot. And there we go, puppy head. It's a pretty big puppy. It's squirming around already in there. Just gonna help push a little bit there. Yeah. There we go. Break our puppy sack. Get my little good job, Mama. Just move it out of all that wet stuff. Start clearing airways here. Oh. Good, Mama. Good job. Look at her puppy right away. That's a nice big puppy. Good job. umbilical cord chewed and cut. Good job. I like to let mamas chew that um, instead of cutting it because a completely cut umbilical cord, the bleeding doesn't stop as fast. And she's licking and probably pushing out that placenta right now, which is great. Good, a little bit of squeaking out of this puppy. I want to make sure that you can actually see this. Maybe I'll turn over to the big camera. They can see over here too. So nice big black puppy. I try and get a little squeak. That means that puppy airways are clear. Hey, I got puppy right here, mama. Yeah. I like to make sure puppy airways are clear. Good. Yeah. I listen. Nice squeaky, clear lungs. Yes, good mama. I'm gonna toss another towel over there to absorb some of that. Then I need to start getting some of my stuff documented on this puppy, yeah. Little black male at 9.08 a.m. on the 14th of November. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So I will grab my puppy litter record. Start writing down my facts. Puppy number one, male, black and white. Date of birth, the 14th. Time of birth, 9.08 a.m. Delivery was normal, which means head first versus breech, which would have been butt first. And then at some point here, shortly, I'm gonna sneak over and try and get a quick weight on my puppy. Get my scale on and ready to roll. Make sure it's zeroed out and make sure it's on the proper units, which like I said, I like to measure my puppies in grams. So yeah, Questy's just snuggling her puppy really nicely. I know, mamas. I'm gonna sneak Kim for just a second. She'll probably watch me. That's okay. That's okay. 504 grams. Perfect. Get him back over to mama right away. That's a nice big old puppy. I'm gonna toss this over here. Try and absorb some of that additional fluid. Write down my weight. On my puppy sheet. 504 grams. Now, while she's snuggling him and doesn't have another puppy on the way, I'm going to try and draw him out on my little diagram here. He's already written looking to latch, start nursing, which is awesome. I love to see it. Um, also, 
when they latch, that'll release more oxytocin, that'll keep those contractions coming, keep labor progressing. And this is not her first litter and she knows exactly what to do when those puppies come out, start opening puppy sacks, licking them, cleaning them, allowing them to nurse, push out that placenta. So we can help with some of that process of breaking puppy sacks when we need to and helping her hold while she chews off that umbilical cord and helping clean him up a little bit and get his airways cleaned, but then get him back to mama so that she can start doing her motherly things. Yeah, more pushing happening. We know that he's got a big old saddle. Yes. And once, once she has a couple more puppies, this one puppy won't get all of her attention. She'll be able to spread that out a little bit more. So Quest was relaxing after she had this first puppy for quite a while, um, for a little while at least. Now she's doing a little more panting again, probably moving towards that next puppy and the next set of contractions to push the next puppy out. But um, sometimes they get a little reprieve between puppies. Sometimes it can go pretty quick. It just really depends. Little squeaky guy. Yeah. Let me check his little umbilical cord actually, Quest. Let me check it. So his little umbilical cord's bleeding a little bit. I'm gonna grab a towel and check it. Come here. Let me check him. Just gonna put a little extra pressure on that after I look at it. Well, he's got like a little black patch by his umbilical cord. I hadn't noticed that before. So it's doing a little bit of bleeding, but what I'll do is just hold some pressure on that for now and um, I know I'll put him over here so you can see him, but I'm gonna just hold pressure on that. It's not bleeding a ton, not an emergency, just need to try and help that get stopped, yeah. But then also keeping him here for mama and snuggled up close, I know, I know. I know you want to lick it more, but I'm not going to let you lick it because I'm going to try and hold pressure on it. There we go. Okay, Mama, I'm just holding him. You work on your next set of contractions. Uh -huh. More pushing. This little puppy, I want to hold some pressure on its umbilical cord. Your forceps out. They're right there, yep. Because she's trying to push again, too, so. Sometimes there's a lot going on all at the same time. So I know it's not always feasible to have an extra set of hands or assistant, but it is nice if you can. Let me show what that looks like, what we did here. So clamp that umbilical cord with those forceps nice and tight, stop the bleeding. Just going to let him lay there kind of comfortably, not putting pressure on it or tweaking on it, but just letting him be comfortable. No, Quest, I know. You want to lick him. It's okay. Perfect. I'm just going to hold that on there for a while, a little bit of pressure to help that stop bleeding and clot up a little bit. 
And the reason that it's probably continuing to bleed a little bit is mom is being really attentive and licking a lot. Um, and that licking is not letting the clotting happen. So once she's got a couple more puppies to worry about, and she's not quite so attentive to this little guy, that'll help too. Yeah, it's being a good mama. Okay, I just released pressure on that. Only about five minutes, and then we'll see if that keeps it from opening up bleeding. I'm gonna try and keep Quest from licking and licking and licking at it. Um, let's just let him snuggle up to you, mama. And you worry about having another puppy. How's that sound? If it keeps bleeding, we can either reclamp or tie it off. Um, sometimes we'll do that like we do with the banding of the tails. We'll band the umbilical cord or we could utilize a cautery stick. Okay. Shh, shh, shh. I know, I know. Good job, Mom. Yeah, you hear him squeaking? Yeah, he's doing some squeaking. Good job, Quest. Good job, here comes the next one. Good job, Mama. Try and get this set up so I can be hands-free. Good job. Good job pushing. I got this little puppy tucked up out of the way so he doesn't get squished while mom's concentrating on this. Good job. Yeah, it's coming. Just gotta finish, mama. Don't stop now. Just keep encouraging her to keep pushing on that one. Whatever gets comfortable. So we already were able to see it kind of sneaking out down here. Puppy sack. Mm, it's okay. Keep pushing. It's not there yet, Mama. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Push. This mama. Okay. We're gonna help little guy that's stuck over here. He's okay. We're just gonna move him up here so he's a little bit out of the way for right now. While you concentrate on finishing this puppy. Come on. Shh. You're fine, Mama. Okay. Shh, 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 shh. I'm just going to move him over here. So on this next set of contractions, I'm going to really encourage her to finish pushing this puppy out because it's hanging out right in the birth canal. You can see a little bit of sack exposed. So we don't want it to hang out there too long, do we, Mama?
Let me try and get her up to stand and see if repositioning her is going to help her continue pushing on this puppy. Come on, Quest. Stand up. Come on. Come on. Here you go. Here you go. Come on. Okay. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. Oh, I know. Come on. Good girl, Quest. Good girl, Questy. Come on. Stand up. You can do it, mamas. Come on. Come on. You got it. Come on. Let's go. Let's move puppy. Good. Come on. Come on. Come on, Quest. Okay. Okay. Good, 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 good. Okay. Good. Let's see if that is going to help. Keep moving this. There we go. There we go. Good. Good girl. Pushing, contracting. Good. Tail curled. Good job. Snuggled there. Yeah, there's her. Puppy sat coming. Water broke. Good pushes, Mom. Good pushes. Leave his umbilical cord alone. more discharge yeah where do you want to be to push this puppy out where do you want to be It's okay. Is he making you uncomfortable being all squeaky?
Yeah, Mako's puppies are crying. You can hear them. Mm -hmm. Good job pushing. Good job pushing. Good job. Another nice hard contraction. Good job. Keep pushing through those, Mama. Yeah. Good pushes. See how that tail gets out of the way when she's pushing like that? Yeah. Good. Good, good pushes. Good pushes. I'm just gonna try and reposition so I can see what's going on back here a little bit more. Good. Pushing through those contractions, good. Good job. Good pushes. Good job pushing, Mama. More looking, more pushing. Good. No puppy yet, though. Straighten up. Lump and pat again a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, you can see that puppy kind of coming down. I can see it already right down in there. Good. Some more discharge. Good job. Good job, Mama. Really close, Mama. Here. Let me get this puppy pushed out of the way there. Yeah. Here we go. Puppy's coming out. Breach. I'm just going to try and help the breech puppy. Keep pushing, Mama. So puppy didn't just pop, flop out there. I'm holding on. Good, good, good. Good job. There's puppy. I'm gonna get this guy out of the way here. There we go. Doing a little dance here. There we go. There we go. And there's the placenta. Good. Get that puppy sack broke there. There we go. Get my 
nasal. Lots of little bubbles in nasal passages this time. So I wanna, oh yeah, you see all that snot kind of coming out there? I wanna clear that. Lots of bubbles. I want that to come out, not in, so that the puppy doesn't inhale that. I'm gonna sneak puppy so that I can help with airways here a little bit more because I'm hearing quite a bit of bubbles and weaseling, raspy breath. So I just wanna press that nasal bulb up against each nostril, help clear that out. There we go, get most of that. I'll even go down into the mouth a little bit. Not very far, but just enough to help suction any of that out, good. And then, still hearing some wheezing, so I'm gonna try and get a little squeak out of this puppy. Yeah, so rub vigorously. Don't feel like you're being too rough. You can rub pretty vigorous. You wanna get them to squeak. Yeah, that'll help clear those airways. I'll sometimes even pinch a little bit of the skin between my fingers to try and get a good cry. I know, Mama, we're gonna get a good cry out of puppy. Yeah, yeah, let's help cry. Let's help cry. Yeah. Where's this little guy? Where's he at? Stuck under Mama's big old belly. Let's put him here. Think about him for a second. I don't know if you can hear. There, we're trying to cry. We're trying to cry. That's what we want. Hold on, Mama. Oh, I know, I know. I'm helping. And they don't always know you're helping, right? She trusts me. She knows me. But she also wants to be a mama and doesn't understand that what I'm doing is to benefit the puppy. So she's whining a little bit. But it's important that we make sure puppy is healthy and airways cleared. Now we're trying to get some, starting to get some little cry cries. You can press on little puppy paws a little bit just to try and pinch, just to try and pinch. Get that little cry. Oh, we're trying to cry. Squeaking. We're getting there. Oh, I know, mamas. You can hear that those airways aren't clear, right? Getting there, though. Getting there, but not clear yet. We're getting there, but we're not clear yet. <coughs> Trying. You can hear it's trying to clear its airways, but still not a super strong cry, so I'm working on that still. I know. Yeah. Gravity, help let gravity help do some of the work. Get that 
puppy's head pointed down a little bit so that all those fluids can drain out. Pinch a little on the ear. Come on. Tough little pup pup. I know. We're getting there, Mama. We're getting there. I know. We're getting there. Trying to latch, that's good. <laughs> I can still see, hear that little bit of gurgling in those lungs though. Stronger cries though, you can hear that already. It's getting stronger. down here getting squished a little bit. Here, let's move you over here. So this would be something that I would note on my litter diagram when I get around to recording some notes is that this puppy sounded pretty wheezy, like it had a lot of fluid in its lungs so that I can be really aware and listening for any changes in its breathing over the next few days. Because sometimes that will lead us to need to utilize some antibiotics um, to prevent against uh, them getting really sick from aspirated pneumonia. Sounding a lot better though. Sounding a lot better, baby. Little girl, finally got to check. A little female, liver and white. Born at 10.52. Let's go ahead and write your sh stuff down. Mama can snuggle you for a second and then I'll get a weight on you. Here you go. Here you go. Pop that over there so you can see Mama with the babies while I write some notes. Okay, so. Still the 14th, 10.52 a.m. Birth was breech this time. Puppy number two, female, liver and white. And then I'm gonna make my little notes. My notes just say, was very wheezy, took a lot to clear lungs, so that I can pay attention for that. Now, I'm gonna get my scale ready here. 
so I can write my puppy weight down. Make sure I'm on the right units, grams. That I am. She's being licked on, which is great. Okay, let me grab pup pup and get a quick weight on her. I'll be right back with her, mama. 300 and... Three ninety six, three hundred and ninety six grams. Get her back over to Mama. Well, Mama's busy cleaning up a little bit. Let me look at you. Let me look at your little drawings. Oh, you're pretty. Look at that pretty marking puppy. Nice solid head. With short hair puppies, we don't use colored collars to designate their puppy number or anything like that. Um, I actually just draw them out because they have such distinctive patches. Now I'm no artist and my drawings aren't exactly perfect, but they're pretty dang close most of the time. Head patches, butt patches, and then everything in between. Okay, now to color you in. Got it. Let me get you back over here. Start trying to snuggle in and nurse. Bloody discharge is completely normal during this process. Mama's bodies are going through a lot. There's a lot of fluids, so that was not an excessive amount of blood. You know, if it's just running and pooling out of her and the volume seems a lot, definitely that would be something to contact your vet about, be concerned about, but a little bit of discharge, a little bit of fluid dripping, through this process is completely normal. I'll just try and keep it cleaned up and wiped up as much as we can. Mm -hmm. You've got your little new babies tucked up tight. They're so cute, Quest. They're so cute. Puppies are latched and nursing really well, which is great. That's gonna help with oxytocin levels so that those contractions continue and labor keeps progressing. Got some more pushing happening. Gonna straighten out our whelping pad a little bit if we can. Good job, mama. As the whelping box gets a little more crowded with puppies and everything, it's a lot of things for mama to keep track of, the puppies, and not squishing them when she's getting comfortable. So I will help with that process. Make sure puppies are out of the way. I'll try and straighten this out a little bit. Yeah. Tuck this up a little bit, Quest. You're fine, I got it. I'm just helping me arrange you a little bit. There we go. There we go. Let's get you back over here, Bubba's. I'm gonna do another little... Oh yeah, those lungs sound really nice and clear now. Good, 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 good. Glad to hear it. You, how do you sound? Oh yeah, nice and clear. You got this. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job pushing. You got it, Mama. Not yet, but you're working on it. You got this. I know, Mama. You're doing so good. Getting close. Good job, Quessie. Good push. 
Really close. Good job. Getting close, Mama. A few more pushes on this puppy and it'll be out, okay? Nice, good push. Good, good, good push. Good push, Quest. Good push, Quest. Getting there. Ooh, yeah. That was a big sploosh. A lot of pressure on that one. Let's, let's see if we can snuggle these guys out of the way. So the puppy didn't come with that big push. There's a lot of pressure. Um, that puppy sack burst. So we're gonna help her understand that there's no puppy. Let's get this wiped a little bit up. We don't need all this fluid here. Get it wiped quick. Clean up the whelping box just a little so we can continue on with this puppy. Puppy getting squished under you. Sorry, puppy's getting squished under you, Quest. There we go. Got her up. Good. Come on, push mama. I'm gonna potty break. Okay, I'm definitely coming with you. She's probably a little uncomfortable needing a potty break to pee so she can feel more comfortable pushing, but I'm definitely gonna be with her because yeah, I had to pee. Definitely don't want her to try and push a puppy out outside when she feels like she's needing to go to the bathroom and feeling that pressure. So make sure. All we're doing is going pee. She may try and poop as well, but I'm gonna be here to make sure that we don't have a puppy try and be born outside, yeah. A lot of pressure, yeah. Feeling like she needs to poop, but just probably needs to have this next puppy, so. Moving around a little bit can help things move forward. A Little more pee, and then we're gonna say, let's go inside, mama. Quest. <whistles> mm. 
No pooping's happening, so let's go back inside, Mama. Okay, come on. I'm gonna go inside. She can also get an opportunity to get a little bit of water. Do you want a little water, Quiz? Do you want a little water? You want some? No? Okay. Good pushes. Good pushes. And a squeaker. Probably need to change this whelping pad after this puppy too. Get her some dry bedding. Dear mama. Good pushes. Not yet. Stimulate her a little bit to help her keep pushing. Good. Good job pushing, Mom. Good job pushing, Mama. I also want to point out this little bit of green discharge we're seeing now. Um, now that the first puppy or two has been born is also completely normal to have a little bit of that. Um, that's just part of the placenta and meconium that um, comes out with each puppy. So there's a little bit of green discharge. Not anything to worry about. Now, if you're seeing green discharge prior to any puppies being born and mama's labor isn't really progressing, that's when I would seek veterinary attention. You can see the puppy starting to come down into the birth canal there. Gets firmer up here. Still soft down there. Yep, here we go. Puppy number three is coming. There we go. Normal puppy. There we go. That's a little fluid. Help clear those airways right away. Good. Yeah. Here's your baby. Good job, Mama. Yeah, you did good. Oh, baby. <laughs> Believe me, you go through a lot of towels during this process, huh? I want to hear puppy for a second. A little bit gurgly, so I'm going to go ahead and clear some airways just a little bit more over here. All good, Quest. Look, I'm just helping Mama. Let's get these guys scooched over here so nobody gets squished while we're doing this. Look, I got them right here. They're right here. I'm just gonna get a little bit of rubbing and vigorous rubbing. Yes, you can help me. The puppy. Yes, good job. Um, yes, good. Let's see if we can get a little puppy cry out. Make sure airways are clear. Yes. 
let me let me rub a little. Yeah. Get a little squeak. Get a little squeak. A little bit. Airways don't sound bad. Not a huge cry yet, but definitely don't sound as raspy as a puppy two did. So that's good. Good. There, there. So we've got a little liver puppy. Let's check. Let's check. A little male, a little male. Sometimes people have a hard time determining if it's a male or a female. And I can show you here in a little bit how you can check the difference. Um, because sometimes that umbilical cord can be a little bit um, distracting and you're not exactly sure what you're looking at. So let me go ahead and get you tucked in here, Bubba. Okay. Get my puppy diagram out again. Okay. Puppy three, male. He's got a little tiny, like. Oh, a little spot. Uh -huh. That's odd. Yep, and pretty white puppies. This guy looks really white. This look like more like Quest, probably. He looks like he might be a little darker ticked. But put my scale on, make sure my units are correct. Gonna sneak this little puppy over there real quick, mama. Yep. Three hundred and ninety-eight grams. Good. So I'll write that down on my little puppy sheet here. Puppy number three was born eleven fourteen at twelve thirty-four p.m. Three hundred and ninety-eight grams. Born normal. Male liver and white puppy. So time frame between all of these puppies so far is puppy number one was born at nine oh eight a.m. Puppy two at ten fifty-two. So. Not quite two hours later, but close. And then puppy number three at 1234, which was about an hour and a half after puppy number two. So on average, Quest is having a puppy every couple hours. Um, she looks pretty big still. So I don't usually start to get concerned um, unless I see labor stalling um, or more than four hours between puppies. So at this point when she still has so many puppies, I would expect that they're still gonna come approximately every two hours apart. But as she gets closer to being done, those puppies have a lot further to move. So it may take longer between puppies. But as long as she's still progressing, she's not getting too tired. Um, I'm gonna just let that continue to go naturally. Oh, you're gonna just push another one out real quick or what? Yeah? Okay. And she's already pushing again. I'm gonna make a little liar of me, saying you're about two hours between puppies. Well, we'll see what happens here. Let's see if I can... Definitely hard pushes and contractions again already. Good girl, good girl. Good pushes, Mama. Good pushes. Good pushes. Good job, Mama Quest. You're doing good. Good job. This little guy's already looking to try and get latched. Yes. Really good pushes. 
really good pushes quest. Are a little squeaker, you. What a little squeaker. Oh, good. Push. So I've got another little puppy that their umbilical cord looks like it's bleeding just a little bit when I was checking on them. So I want to show you what I'm going to do to help clamp that. I know Quest. So you can add. A, you can always apply a little bit of pressure, um, and sometimes that'll be enough to just you know hold that pressure for a while, and that'll get it to stop. Sometimes you have to add a little more and I like to use a hemostat. I know Quest here. Let me help. This is and you want to make sure that you <laughs> clamp that nice and tight just down there and you just clamp and these hemostats clip together so then it will just hold that and literally it only needs a couple minutes um, and then you can check it and if it's still bleeding, we can reclamp. We could also add um, a little bit of a clotter, like a silver nitrate stick, something like that, a cautery, um, to make sure that we get that bleeding to stop. But this is not bleeding bad by any means, just trying to get it to stop a little bit um, sooner than letting it just bleed and see if it stops on it, its own after a little while. So I'll leave that for a few minutes and then check it. And we we're already able to take those hemostats off this little guy and he's all done bleeding now, so. Just a little bit of additional pressure really helps stop any excess bleeding on those umbilical cords. Very rarely do I get one that if clamping doesn't help, um, that I have to do more than maybe even band it or do the cautery with it, but. That little guy stopped with the hemostats um, and this little puppy stopped with the hemostats as well after just a couple minutes of additional pressure. See that starting to come in there in the birth canal there. So puppy will be here soon. I don't know if it'll happen on this round of contractions or not, but she's getting close for sure. Good job. Then after this puppy, we're definitely switching out her whelping pad, getting her some new dry bedding. You're getting close, Quest. Mm -hmm. Good push, good push, good push, good push. Come on, Mama. It's right there. I can feel it. I can feel a little puppy head or butt right there. Little puppy head, there we go. right away. Yeah, good job, Mama. Good job, Mama. Let me peek at this guy for a second. Check him over fast. Oh, she's licking up herself a little bit. Vigorous rubbing. Oh, there's a little squeak right away. Good job, puppy. Good job, puppy. Oh, yeah. You can hear it trying to clear its airways a little bit. Yeah, good, puppy. Yeah. Let me just dry him off a little bit more, Mama. Come here, come here, come 
here just a second. Little male. Yeah. Let me see. Just listen to his lungs. I'll try and get a couple more squeaks out of you. Some vigorous rubbing usually helps. Grumble about it a little bit, that's just fine. Pinch on the paws just a little bit, trying to get them to vocalize a little bit more to help clear those lungs. There we go, good job, good job. Oh yeah, there we go, there we go. Okay. I'll give you to mama for a second and I'll write down some of your stats. This is puppy number four. Male, liver and white. He was born at 105 p.m. Delivery was normal. And today is the 14th. I'll write down his weight and his markings here in a little bit, but mama's still cleaning him up. So let me see about getting some of this stuff cleaned up here. He's already trying to nurse. He's nursing on his own little hand, his own little paw, you little silly puppy. We got 370. Let me just make sure that's teared out. Nope, it's not. Oops. I know, Quest. Get my scale on. Zeroed out. We're weighing in grams. Woo, 478. Good puppy. 478 grams. And then, like I said, I'll get his markings wrote down here in a little bit. But I want to get Mama's box cleaned out quick between puppies now. You can see her pulling out a placenta right now. Yep, she's pulling on that and pulling that placenta out. Yep. So that's the placenta from her last puppy. Good job, Mama. Good job, Mama. Still pretty big with four puppies already born. Yeah. Good job. Good pushes, Mama. Good pushes. So Quest got up and acted a little anxious, so probably needs another potty break. Of course, going with her to make sure she gets an opportunity to go potty and just to make sure that we don't have any Puppy's trying to happen out here. Definitely had to pee again. Just gonna watch to make sure all she's doing is going potty. I'm sure she's still feeling some pressure. Definitely still has quite a few puppies left, so. Then maybe she'll feel a little more comfortable to start pushing again. I'm gonna go back inside. We'll see if she wants to get a drink of water. Okay, Quest, let's go. I know. Just still feeling that pressure, but we're gonna go in and see if we can have a puppy inside now. Okay, let's go. Good girl. Go ahead and get a little water quest. Good girl. Good girl, mama, get a little water. Good pushes. Yeah, I can feel puppy coming into the birth canal there. Let's see if we can get this camera angle over here. There we go. Getting very close. So 
so close, Mama. So close. Here it comes. Good job, Mama. Good pushes. There we go. Just good job. Here we come. A normal puppy. Normal birth, I mean. Almost. Get that puppy moved out of the way that's getting a little squished. Gonna get this puppy moved over here. Clear some airways. Got some. Clear some airways. Got some bubbles. Yeah. And Quest's getting the placenta taken care of right now, too. Good job, Mama. Rub this puppy pretty vigorously here. Yeah. Mm -hmm, I think. Ones don't sound bad, but I'm going to try and get a little puppy cry out here. I know, Quest. We're just trying to get some to hear some clear lungs. I just want to hear some clear lungs here. Just a second. Those ones aren't your puppies. Those are Mako's puppies over in the other whelping box. Yeah. I know. I know. Little black male. Let me get another towel here. Like I said, you're gonna go through a lot of towels in this process. Come on, my little guy. You don't wanna cry at all? He's just not wanting to vocalize. I just like to hear that, to hear nice strong lungs. Here, I'll get this one for you, Quest. No worries, that guy got a little away from you. All right, some grumbling. Getting some grumbling now. Sometimes it takes a bit. Squeezing that little puppy paw just a little bit. Little ear. Back the scruff. Just trying to get, there we go. There we go. That was a nice strong lung sound. Good puppy. Get my icky towels out of here. Yeah. Okay. Now let's let him snuggle up with mama for a second. She can clean him and then I'm gonna write down some information about this puppy on my whelping sheet. So I'll pull that out here. Puppy number five. It's a male, black and white. It's delivered at 3.30. PM on the 14th of November. Delivery was normal. 
So far we've only had one puppy born breech out of this litter. And then I'm going to see if I can get him over here on the scale quick. Make sure nothing's in the way so it's all zeroed out. Let's see what we got. 440 grams. Get him back over to Quest. Quest in her pile of five puppies right now. I'll be able to start writing this puppy's markings down here. So I wanted to show how I'm checking if I have a male puppy or a female puppy. And I know that may sound silly to think about, but these puppies are pretty small. Other breeds of puppies may be even smaller. And that umbilical cord can kind of be distracting and you get sucked into looking at that and not looking at the rest of the genitalia. So let me pull out my one little female puppy that we've got in this litter right now. So if I pull, fold, roll her over. So you can see her umbilical cord here, but then also you can see her vulva down here between her legs, but it's very small. And there's a lot of wrinkly puppy skin and bellies and stuff. So my little female, and then all of these guys are males. She's got a whole bunch of brothers right now. So let me just pull one of these guys out, roll him on his back again. Got our umbilical cord, and then you can see his penis here. Um, and then obviously no vulva between the legs there, but almost looks like a second belly button at this point. So just something to be looking for when you're identifying your male and female puppies. Usually once my mama dogs have had a few puppies um, like this with Quest having five puppies, they do a lot less moving around during the rest of the laboring process. They kind of just lay there. They might get up, change positions once in a while, go out to go to the bathroom, of course, but they usually stay pretty stationary through the rest of the contractions and pushing process, especially for each puppy, not getting up, moving around quite as much, changing positions. Good job, mama. Getting closer. Getting closer. Oh, Questy. Good job. Go ahead and soak up some of this fluid. We're probably going to need a whelping pad change after this puppy. Get stuff cleaned up a little bit. Puppy born on you. Good job, Questy. Good job. Questy. Next puppy was just born. Normal. Good job, puppy. Good job, puppy. Good job, mama. Camera out of the way. It's hard to get all this stuff done and see everything that's going on and show you guys everything that's going on. Clear some airways here. Yeah, a little gargly, a little bit of bubbles. Can you hear how wheezy that puppy sounds? Yeah, I want to get that airway cleared out for sure. Mm. 
little bit of gravity to help. I don't know, you're fine, Mama. Puppy's fine, we're just helping clear airways. <laughs> Puppy's okay. Yeah, let's try and get some squeaks out of them. Help clear those lungs. There you go, that was a good cry. Let's get another one, yeah. You can hear it kind of struggling still there with its airways. So, sorry, Quest, I'm going to move you so I can work on Puppy a little bit. There we go. Puppy's fine. Just want to get those airways cleared out, though. I can still hear it being wet. No more rubbing. There we go. <laughs> Making that puppy a little bit mad. That's okay. <sighs> That'll help clear those lungs crying like that. Yeah. I know, Mama. Shh. Yeah, puppy's good. Questy. Oh, squishing a couple of puppies. Okay. Okay. So she's, we're going to help her because she's getting a little anxious and she's not sure what to do. So we're going to help her so she doesn't squish her puppies. So we're going to just move everybody off to the side for a second. Get a little head count here. There's puppy. There's a puppy. There, that was some fluid coming out there. Getting a lot closer. Still not completely clear though. Getting there. I know, puppy. Much better. That sounded good. That sounded good. Puppy's right here. Mama. Puppy's right here. We got a little female, liver female. I'll write some stuff down on that puppy. Then do another airway check here in a little bit. Delivery was normal. 11, 14, 23 still. A little liver female. Time was at 4.42. Okay, and we'll need to sneak a weight on that puppy. And then I'll also need to get its markings written down, but giving mama a second with that puppy. Good job, Quest, good job. Also, I'm gonna switch out this bedding after I get a weight on this puppy. Get it cleaned up a little bit in here. Just sneak your puppy for a second. See what we've got. 406 grams. Oh yeah, airways sound really good now. Write that down on my puppy sheet. 406 grams. 
copy number six. Okay. Let me go ahead and get my whelping box straightened up and then I'll get markings down on that puppy. Let's help this little guy get unsquished. There we go. Good job, Mama. I know you got a lot of them to keep track of now, don't you? You got a good mama, like Questy Pup. She's keeping her puppies clean. She's licking them. Just making sure that she's helping to stimulate them to go potty. Like she is now. Yeah. Right from the get go. It's really nice to have a mom with very natural mothering instincts. Um, makes taking care of a litter of puppies a lot easier when they do all of these things for you in the beginning, obviously with our support and help as well. Going down the line, getting everybody cleaned up. Good girl quest. Oh, here's some good pushes. Good pushes, mama. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna move this little puppy between your legs, okay? So we don't squish them. There we go. I'm just getting these guys out of the way for you, Mama. You can see the puppy coming down into the birth canal right now. Coming down to about here. Good pushes, Mom. Good pushes, Mom. Good job. There we go. Normal birth. this towel to soak up some of this extra help break this puppy sack here yeah good job quest hold on to that umbilical cord there we go just gonna double check airways here Over here. I'm gonna just do some vigorous rubbing. Puppy to vocalize a little bit to help clear those airways. You sound a little gurgly, but not bad couple good little cries and we'll have some clear airways. Yeah, there you go. Good job. Yes. Good job, Mama. I'm going to listen to airway. Oh, nice and clear. Good. Little female. Here you go. Here, 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 right here. Little female. 
We'll get some of this stuff recorded. Puppy number seven, female, liver and white, 11, 14. Time of birth was 6 p.m. Delivery normal. Still only one breech puppy so far. We'll definitely need to get a little weight on her here. So I'm gonna get my Scale ready and set up. Make sure it's zeroed out. Questy's just licking her a little bit more. That's fine. Yeah. Good job, Quest. Let me sneak her for just one second. 354 grams. There you go. Write that down and then I'll be able to get my diagram filled out with markings here in a little bit. Good pushes, Mama. Looks like you got a puppy coming pretty quick, actually. Good girl. You can see it already coming into the birth canal there. Good job, Mama. Good job. Good job. Good job, Mama. Good pushes, good pushes, good pushes. Good job, Quest. Good job, good job. If we're breach on this puppy, we'll see. Kind of feel like we are breach on this puppy. Good job, Questy. You got it, Mama. Couple more good pushes. Couple more good pushes. Yeah, Mako's chewing her bone over in the other whelping box right now. Yeah, I can hear it too. And you got this. You got it. Almost there, Quest. Almost there, Mama. This puppy's almost there. You got it. You got it. Good pushes. Good pushes. Come on.
Good job, Mama. You got it, Quest. You got it, Quest. You got it. A couple more good pushes. Puppy's almost here. You got it. Good pushes, Quest. Good girl, good girl. Good job. Come on. Come on. So close, Quest. Good job, good job, good job. Trying to help keep that puppy from sucking back up in there after she finishes pushing each push. Because this has been a little bit of a longer pushing process on this puppy. And stand right to here. We're trying to get it the rest of the way. Yeah. Come on, you got it, Mama. You got it. You got it, Mama. A couple more good pushes. Let's get this one out. You got it. Let's get this one out. We may need to get her up and repositioned. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Little, little toot. You can see that puppy's wiggling and moving already in there. Well, it's a normal Perth. Puppies just face up instead of face down. So it's making it a little harder to push it out. So come on, Mama. Almost there. I'm definitely going to want to get this puppy suctioned right to begin with because it's coming out not in a puppy sack. Ah, that's a big puppy. Come on. It's kind of stuck up there. So I'm going to get my finger between that. There we go. And up under her shoulder. There we go. Help pull that puppy out a little bit. Just gently. I wasn't pulling on that pup hard. And then I'm going to clear airways. That's a big puppy. here. Do a little vigorous rubbing. So that puppy was born normal but kind of upside down um, and it didn't go through that birth canal as smoothly. And Quest definitely was working on that one for a little bit longer to get this puppy pushed all the way out. Little gurgly, we're gonna work on that. Little male. Just trying to clear airways still. I'm not putting this very far down there, just enough to try and get some of that mucus and fluids 
out of the back of the throat, out of the lungs. Now some more vigorous rubbing. Yeah, get some crying, clear those lungs. Yeah. Good. Questy, oh, here's your baby. Careful. We've got lots of puppies to roll around on here. If you want to roll this way, we'll just move all these ones over here. Yeah, so nobody gets squished. Yeah, there we go. Got them all? Yep, all the rest of them are over here. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Look at him. I'm going to write some stuff down and then we'll get a weight on him here in a second and double check his airways. Puppy number eight, male, liver and white, 11, 14, 6, 28 p.m., born normal. I'm going to mention that he was upside down in my little notes section. Something interesting to mention, definitely not normal way that puppies are born, and it definitely took a little bit longer for that puppy to come out of the birth canal. Okay, he seems like a really big puppy. 504 grams. There we go. Yeah, you guys decided to snuggle up on the towel. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down and then I'll work on getting um, mama situated with him and his markings written down. This welcome box is starting to get pretty crowded, mama. You're a sleepy guy, huh? There we go. Let's not pull on that too much, Quest. Okay, that's good. You're fine, you're fine. Let me see here. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Let's just give him a second. Yeah, we're gonna have to clamp that, it looks like. There's umbilical cords bleeding a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a clamp. Let me see. Gonna go ahead and put a little pressure on first. And then if we need to, I will go ahead and use the hemostats and clamp it. Here, just a minute. I think it's about done. Hey, hey, hey. Seems to be done for now. I'll check it again in a minute. If I need to apply more pressure, I will. Let's just leave it though, mama. Let's let it clot up good. Good. I'm going to go out for a potty break. <coughs> Quiet, Mako. Turn the lights on out here so we can see what's going on when Mama goes out to potty. Definitely feeling some pressure. Still doing some pushing. Okay, Questy. Let's go in and have a puppy inside, huh? Okay, Quest. Come on. Good girl, come on. Good girl. Time to go back inside. Quest, you got it, Mom. Almost here. Job. Oh yeah. One more good push, mama. There we go. It's right there. It's right there. Good push, good push almost. Breach. So I'm just gonna help get my arm, finger up between puppy sack and that and help just get that puppy 
over its shoulder. There we go. Lots of gurgling, popping those their ways and get another thing. There we go. A little bit bigger towel than this. Some vigorous rubbing here. The puppy's trying to cry and clear those airways. That's good. You can see the little bubbles coming out of its nostrils. That means we know we've got some airways that we gotta clear. Not a super strong cry yet, but we're getting there. Use gravity a little bit to help that drain down. So their little heads pointed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. See if we can get a little cry. Not yet. Close. Oh, Mama, I got this puppy. You're good. Quite a bit of bloody discharge there, which is fine. That's due to the placenta, most likely. Here we get some vocalizing. Getting there, getting there, puppy. Yeah, we're getting there. Sounding more clear. There we go. Good puppy. It's okay, Mama. Just trying to get her to be clear. Sounds much more clear. I'll check again in a little bit. It's a little female. Okay, let me go ahead and puppy over to mama and then document some of my information on my puppy sheet. So that was puppy number nine, female, black and white, 1114, time of birth was at 8.44 p.m. Delivery was breech. I'll have to get a weight on that little puppy here in a little bit. Got my scale here. Make sure it's all zeroed out. Get a quick weight on her. A little bit smaller puppy, 338 grams. There we go. So we just got whelping Matt re 
adjusted and changed out. Now I'm going to get Quest up and try and get her to walk around, go potty again. We're going to probably palpate her and just kind of see what we can see. I feel like I can still feel a puppy in there, but she's hard to feel um, laying down curled up like this. So definitely want to feel around, see where we're at. Um, and get her an opportunity to go to the bathroom, get something to drink too. Can you pass me a towel when you have a second? So I've got one ready. Thanks. Good job pushing, Mama. Puppy's already coming here. There we go. Close, Mama. You're close. Couple more pushes and that puppy will be out. Good girl. Almost, Mama. Mm, that one is breech too. Okay. I'm gonna help get my finger up around the edge. Help pull a little bit. Not hard, just a little bit. There we go. Okay, puppy. Nice, strong cries right away. Good job, puppy. It's okay, Quest. I got puppy. Yeah. Is. Get a few, few more strong cries. A little male. There we go. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Careful, Mama. It's probably good. I'm just pinching close to that umbilical cord. So while she eats off a few of the little edges. Good. Good. Puppy number 10. Male. Liver and white. 11, 14. Was born at 10 p.m. Delivery was breech. Him on there. Four hundred and forty six grams. There you go, baby. And I will get his markings written down. 
Okay, so we are fairly confident that Quest is done having her puppies. Um, we have an ultrasound, so we're able to check that way as well as palpate her. Yeah, you want a little bit of uh, dinner here. So we checked all those things. She definitely seems like she's done no longer contracting or pushing really either. Um, so we're gonna call it done at 10 puppies. Um, which was over the course of about 11 hours, which is pretty average. Um, I would say one to two hours per puppy is pretty normal. Upwards of four hours between puppies is not abnormal as long as mom is still, you know, in active labor um, and hasn't quit on you. So if you feel like it's going too long between puppies, definitely reach out to your vet. Um, I want to mention we took the whelping pad out now because um, for a couple reasons. One, we don't want a puppy, especially with this many puppies, getting buried underneath of there, trapped underneath of there, or squished underneath of there, as well as the whelping nest itself will be able to have heat um, transferred to those puppies a lot easier when um, they can be directly on it, which they can't regulate their own body temperatures at this point. So we want to offer them as much of that as possible um, without that barrier of the whelping pad in there. Next, it is really easy to clean too without the uh, whelping pads in here. Um, and as you can see, probably a little bit Quest is still oozing. That's going to be normal. She's going to have some bloody discharge, potentially even some greenish discharge, dark brown discharge for um, the next few days at minimum. Upwards of a couple weeks is completely normal for mamas to have some light discharge for a while. Um, she decided that she was ready to eat. She hadn't eaten anything all day, um, wasn't interested throughout this whole laboring process, but um, not all mamas will actually be interested in eating a meal even um, after they're done having puppies. They just are tired or they're not interested. Um, and she ate her meal, which makes me really happy. We're gonna have water in here for her to have constant access to. Um, and then the last thing is I'm gonna take her flat collar off. I don't like leaving those on mamas, especially unattended with puppies. We don't want anybody getting hung up there, but it is nice to have that collar if you're leading her in and out of the whelping box. When I was hooking her up to get her rinsed off and showered off after her litter, um, I could clip her up into the tub that way. But now that she's done with puppies, it's off. Um, and we did give her a quick warm water bath after this because she was covered with quite a bit of bodily fluids um, just to clean her up a little bit. So and make her a little more comfortable with some warm water so she's doing a great job this is one pile of puppies I tell you what um, so we're gonna let her rest I have a whelping nest camera that I'm able to watch these puppies I'll have my baby monitor on so that I can hear um, if anything is happening squeaking wise if anybody seems squished I can be right here to help them um, this is a lot of puppies for her to keep track of for sure uh, but usually mamas in the first uh, 24 hours are pretty tired so they're just gonna lay there with them pretty easily um, and then as those puppies get stronger they're able to wiggle their ways out from underneath mama's arms and body a little bit too when they're squeaking around so um, that's one reason that I really like a whelping nest that has pig rails like this because if a puppy would get squished up against the side between mama and the side of the whelping box um, this is going to protect them from getting squished up there too tightly instead of like a swimming pool or something like that where there is not really any way to keep separation between mama and the side of the whelping box. Um, I have had some people say, oh, well, you can get a puppy squished between the side of mama and the, the divot of the whelping nest. Sure, you a mama can lay on a puppy. Uh, that can happen. It is sad when things like that happen. Um, it is part of the part of a litter of puppy process. There can be loss, um, but we do everything that we can to keep puppies as safe and healthy as possible, mama as safe and healthy as possible. Um, and we're just going to keep monitoring them and checking their daily weights. And that is an entire nother process. So we got through this, right, Mama Quest? We got through having this litter of puppies and they are all healthy and doing great and you're doing great. But now we've got eight weeks of raising this litter of puppies to look forward to. And we'll show you what that looks like as well. So until the next video, I'm Cat the Dog Trainer. This is Mama Quest and we'll see you in the next video.